Well, today we're going to talk about how to do a cap kit on these early 90s Midway soundboards the proper way. So, Mortal Kombat 1, Mortal Kombat 2, Strike Force, uh, High Impact, Super High Impact, Smash TV, and I think maybe one or two others, Judge Dredd, which was never released, but prototype. But any, basically any of those early 90s Midway games that use a separate soundboard, uh, yeah, Revolution X uh, is another one. <clears throat> uh, this method and procedure I'm going to show you here is going to be applicable to any of those. So use this information to uh, and apply it to any of the other soundboards out there. But the most important thing is to realize that the solder joints and the... Not the joints, I'm sorry, the solder pads. The pads for all these axial caps and the radial caps, the electrolytics and the... Well, they're all electrolytic, but the axial caps and the radials, uh, the, the solder pads on these soundboards are super, super fragile. Uh, and just the act of putting a, a soldering iron on them, or even a desoldering gun tip, can cause them to lift and break and tear off. So you have to do this with a little bit of, uh, I'm not going to say discretion, but you want to do it nice and subtly. How about that? So I'm going to show you my method of how to do this and how to be careful because even if you have like your soldering desoldering gun and you just put that on the solder pad and go like this to heat up the pad and then suck it out just the act of going like this can rip and tear that pad off of there they're so thin and so fragile that I don't use the soldering gun on these types of applications and boards so <clears throat> step number one we have our cap kit here we need to remove our heat sink from the amplifier here to get access or to give us access to the caps underneath the heatsink. Uh, and like I say, you can apply this to Mortal Kombat 1 or any of the other ones I mentioned before. It's all going to be the same process. Uh, but first, we want to go ahead and remove the amplifier heatsink and get, get cracking on all of these and show you how to do it. And I want to do this in real time. However, I do want to have just like a. Um, music over, not a voiceover, but just run this in real time, but put music over it because uh, I want to show the full process. Uh, so to make it easier on myself, I guess step one would be to remove the heat sink, but I want to show you how to do these axial caps first. That way I can just start off uh, doing the, the music, putting the music over it, then remove this and go from there. So we're going to remove one of these and I'll show you the process of how it really should be done. <clears throat> So like I mentioned, these solder pads are super tiny and thin, and it's so incredibly easy to damage them. So the easiest thing to do is get yourself a pair of diagonal cutters like this. I use these cheap $9 Play-Dohs you can get on Amazon for like 9 bucks, and they're flush cut. They're flush cut, they're cheap, they work great. Um, but for this application, we want to go ahead and... I should mention this board works fine. So if it doesn't work, if it doesn't work on the back side of this job, we'll know it's something we did. Uh, but <clears throat> we want to take these cutters and just cut the cap like so. Then you lift this up like that. Then what we can do now that my iron isn't even on, I got to turn a little fan on here. Then what we'll do is you can actually heat up the pad from the back side, heat it up from the back side, and just pull this out like that. And same thing with the other lead here. You can heat up this pad and pull the lead out, and that will prevent you from having to use, uh, you know, any kind of pressure or force on these joints to get the solder out. Because after you pull the component legs out, you can just get your regular old uh, <coughs> desoldering braid and use the braid to get the solder out of there. And I would not, I do not recommend using a desoldering gun on these because like I say just the act of going like this to heat the pad up uh, going around the pad with the tip you'll damage the pads it's so incredibly easy to do that <clears throat> and it only takes a couple of times for you to damage them to realize hey I shouldn't do it that way anymore but that being said we can go ahead and heat up this joint here and you'll see that we can just pull this right out let's see if I can do this somewhat easily here I'll back up a bit Back up off a bit and set my cup down. And then we just, there you go, comes right out. And no risk of damage to the pad that way. <clears throat> then we can grab something to pull this other one out of here. We'll just uh, grab that. 
and while applying some pull force on it we'll heat up this other joint here and it comes right out so that is the process and how I recommend taking all these axial caps out of here because that will help you immensely in preventing damage to those traces then once you have the cap out we can go ahead and grab our desoldering braid and uh, which one did I take right here <laughs> I'm looking through the uh, little uh, LCD screen on the camera on the overhead and I got lost there for a minute but okay so we can then take our braid here and I like to use this smaller braid for this this is uh, number one I like to use or size 0 0.030 I like to use this smaller braid because it's less surface area and it's less heat which is better for the the solder pad so let's see if we can get as close as possible here right about there and we'll just go like this you do not want to apply a lot of heat on these because like I say they will lift off very easily look there it is opened up just like that and one of the benefits of using this thinner uh, smaller braid is that it gets down inside the hole much easier than the thicker taller or thicker uh, wider braid <clears throat> there you go look at that it's just that easy both of those holes are open I don't know if you can tell see through but both of those are nice and open and absolute, absolutely no damage to those pads so that is how you want to do that and again this desoldering braid here is the point zero three zero or number one uh, and you know get yourself some of this thinner smaller stuff because a lot of times especially on these five volt and ground pads uh, these are just filter caps by the way uh, it's tough, tough to get that solder out of there because it dissipates a lot of the heat and you have to get the braid in like actually in the hole and when you have this small this small braid here it gets in that hole much easier so that's how you do that so I'm gonna go through here in real time and recap this entire soundboard and again apply this this method here to really any of these soundboards that you have to do and you can get these soundboard uh, cap kits at arcade parts and repair like you can for pretty much anything Peter and his family there that run that side are great people so <clears throat> they work hard to put this stuff together so okay I'm going to stop the voice over here and the narration and go start the music and then we will uh, do this uh, well in real time so let's get that going and see how this turns out
Okay, cutting in here real quick because look at the, I took the filter cap off and it's leaking. Look at this solder joint compared to that one. So I pulled the cap off. You can see the, the edge. There's a little bit of electrolyte right there leaking on the positive side. And somehow it's gotten down here to the negative side because you can tell this solder joint is shiny. Well, somewhat, but that one is completely black. So the, the cap here though, doesn't really seem too bad, but it's got, it's leaking. And that's evidence right there of leakage. So it has been, it's absolutely imperative. If you ever get one of these games with one of these soundboards, the separate soundboard, uh, before you even attempt to turn it on or before you even do anything with it, cap the soundboard because they're all starting to go bad, MK1 especially. So we need to clean that pad up. We can do that quite easily with our fiberglass pen here. And there you go. Looks brand new now. So, yeah, I wanted to point that out. Um, <clears throat> if you got signs of leakage, get yourself one of these pens and clean up the pads. And I'll link this down below. This is actual fiberglass, not those cheap non-fiberglass ones that are all over the place. So, I'm sure we're going to find other leaky caps. But also, my iron, I forgot to mention the iron here runs at 800 degrees. I run my iron at 800 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know the Celsius conversion to that. I'm lazy <coughs> to look it up. But 800 Fahrenheit and also these electrolytics, I can, you just heat up, heat up one pad and then rock that leg out and heat up the other pad and then rock that leg out. And you can just pull the cap out that way. That prevents you from having to be able to, uh, let's see, that prevents you from needing to use the iron, I should say, to try and desolder it while the leg is still in there because it's tremendously easier to just rock rock the leg out or I'm sorry rock the cap out one leg at a time by heating up the pad and rock one leg out other pad rock the other leg out and then try and get the solder out of the joint after the cap's already out it's immensely easier to do it that way you know pretty much as you saw and again <clears throat> we got these two holes here opened up nice and good we don't have to worry about any damage to the pads or traces so yeah, um, we'll mention that, and now I guess I'll turn the music back music back on, and we'll get cracking on doing the rest of it here.
And there you go. That's the full procedure. Uh, we did not lift one pad. We did not, did not lift one trace. We did not damage one pad. We did not damage one trace. Everything was perfect. Uh, I do want to say that we did option to reflow the joints for the main amplifier and the power input header pins. And when you put this heat sink back on, you want to make sure it's sitting as flat against the board as possible. So kind of push down on it. Push down, make sure it's sitting flat when you tighten the screws up so it sits nice and flat And because you don't want the heat sink to bend back and forth. That's how these uh, legs get broken. You want this to sit as flat as on the board as possible and you don't want it to move at all like this is rock solid. So that, uh, I want to mention that as well. Also, these uh, axial caps here, um, they are polarized like any other standard electrolytic capacitor and the arrow always points to the negative and you can see here there is a mark for positive uh, it's underneath here there's a mark right there for positive and the the little indentation here also is indication of positive and the, so the arrow points to negative and see how the indentation in the cap actually coincides with the indentation in the silk screen that's how all these are so I like to actually install these with the rating facing up like that. That way you can go back through if there's a problem and verify that you didn't put a cap in the wrong spot. If the rating is facing straight down like I almost did here on the first one, uh, you're not going to be able to tell, okay, that one's the wrong rating. I put the wrong rating in the wrong spot. So I like to put those facing upwards. Um, and for this particular board, all of the axial caps are 100 volt, 10 microfarad, except for this one in here that's a 47 microfarad. All the rest of them are 10 microfarad, but otherwise, I mean, that's the main procedure there. I don't think I missed anything or forgot to mention something. And it's pretty quick and painless if you do it the proper way, as I just described. So, or not described, I guess, verbally, but visually, as you saw, just as you saw. How about that? So we also got it all cleaned up on the back and everything looks good. So, yeah, I think it's ready for testing, so nothing left to do but to try it out. So let's get it hooked up on the main board and see if I screwed anything up. All right, so the soundboard's hooked back up. We got our ribbon cable and our power cable and everything and the original motherboard that this came with, or the main board, I should say. Uh, now, the I'm sure a lot of you are already aware, but all these soundboards have the ribbon cable here, not just the power cable, but it has the ribbon cable. And if we look here, there's pin one along with the red stripe. And on the soundboard, you also have pin one there, wherever my finger is, right there. That also has to line up with the stripes. So if you have the ribbon cable not connected or on backwards at one of the two other ends, you'll get the red LED and the test tone, but you won't get any actual game audio because the IR key won't be detected because the ribbon cable is backwards. So it has to be hooked up properly. So we're not going to short out everything sitting on chips. Uh, nothing metal's going to short out. We got our power cable and our ribbon cable hooked up correctly. So something else you don't get to see too often is my actual 13-inch Wells Gardner new old stock monitor that I've had for like 12 years on the test bench. Uh, because normally I'm fixing another, another monitor down here. So this is what's normally here when I'm working on boards and other stuff. So uh, we'll turn the light off. And okay, so uh, is it going to work? Did I screw something up? I don't know. Let's find out. We should get the red LED, then the test tone, and then obviously eventually game sounds. So here we go. One, two, three. Yes. Okay. Uh, I didn't mess anything up, at least not as far as I could tell, so it should be fine. Uh, we'll skip past the menu here and... All right. All right, we'll skip past the boot sequence there, I should say. So we'll go to volume adjust. I say we have a successful soundboard rebuild. Round one fight. Okay, so there you go. Um, take this information and do with it what you will, but if you ever have to rebuild one of these soundboards, whether, like I say, it's Total Carnage, Smash TV, Strike Force, uh, MK1, MK2, what have you, Revolution X, take these methods and apply them to your uh, work, and you should come out on the other end successful. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned it. 
learned it. Learned it? Hopefully you learned something. I've only, I only say that on the end of every video. I still mess it up. Hopefully you learned something. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below, and I'll link, of course, that um, uh, fiberglass pen like I talked about and everything. So any questions, let me know. Make sure you comment, and uh, we'll see you next time.